Hi friends, are you uncertain about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle? Don't worry, because I'm going to explain the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle in a very simple way, so that you will have no uncertainty left about it. But before we begin, I just want to say that do check out the full courses on our website and Android app. We have courses on science, maths, coding and artificial intelligence. So do check out the links given below. All right, now let's dive into the quantum world. In the previous video, we saw that de Broglie's hypothesis about electrons was correct. Electrons have a dual behavior. They can behave both as a particle and as a wave. And this is called the wave-particle duality. In 1927, Werner Heisenberg, a German physicist, stated a principle which is famously known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. He said that it is impossible to determine simultaneously the exact position and the exact momentum of an electron. The first time you read this principle, it does not make any sense. Why can't we measure the exact position and momentum of a moving electron? Is it simply a measurement error on our side? If you consider a moving ball or a moving car, we can easily measure the position and the momentum here. Remember, momentum is mass times velocity. So measuring position, mass and velocity of a moving ball or a moving car is really easy. We have been solving so many physics questions on it. In fact, we can easily predict the position and velocity of these moving objects after a certain time. It's the same with the moving Earth and the Moon. Astronomers can measure the exact position and velocity or momentum of these with a high degree of accuracy. That's how we landed the Chandrayaan-3 successfully on the south pole of the Moon. So what's the problem with the electron? The difference is that the ball car, earth and moon, these are all large objects, what we call as macroscopic objects. But when we go into the quantum world, we are talking about really, really, really tiny particles like electrons. And in the quantum world, the classical physics laws break down. And that is where Heisenberg's uncertainty principle comes in. So that's why it states that it is impossible to determine simultaneously the exact position and exact momentum of microscopic moving particles like electrons. I'm sure you're still not convinced. So let's try to get a feel of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle with a very simple example. I'm going to use my favorite insect, the firefly, to explain it to you. I'm sure you've seen or know what a firefly is. It's the glow-in-the-dark insect. Now imagine for a moment you're in a dark room with a firefly flying around in it. And your mission is to find the exact position and exact momentum or we can say the exact velocity of the firefly. Now since the room is dark, to find the exact position of the firefly in the room, you will have to shine a torch on it. So with the torchlight on, you can clearly see the position of the firefly. But because of the bright light from the torch, the motion of the firefly gets disturbed. So you do not get an accurate measurement of what its actual velocity and what its original direction was when it was flying in the dark. So by shining the torch light, you got the exact position of the firefly, but it is impossible to get its exact velocity or exact momentum. To get the firefly's exact velocity, you will have to turn off the torch. You can use the firefly's light to calculate its exact velocity and direction of motion. But in the dark, it is impossible to know the accurate position of the firefly in the room. So see, when you are focusing on position, it is impossible to focus on velocity. And when you focus on velocity, 
it is impossible to focus on the position of the firefly. Now just replace the firefly with an electron and that is exactly what is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Because remember what did Heisenberg say? That it is impossible to simultaneously measure the position and the momentum of the electron accurately. So now I hope you have a better feel of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle with this firefly example. So now let's take a look how we can mathematically express his principle. If we represent the uncertainty or error in position as delta x and the uncertainty in momentum as delta p, then Heisenberg's uncertainty principle can be represented mathematically as delta x times delta p is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi. Here h is Planck's constant which is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. This equation is basically telling us that if you take the product of the errors in position and momentum, then the minimum value is h divided by 4 pi. So the product of errors will be greater than or equal to h by 4 pi. So if the position of the electron is known with a very high accuracy, that is your delta x, the uncertainty in position is very small, then the error in momentum delta p is going to be very large. That is there will be a big uncertainty in the measurement of the momentum of the electron. Similarly, if delta p is very small, then delta x will be very large. So this tells us that just like the firefly example, the more accurate you try to make one measurement, the more fuzzy, the more inaccurate will be the other measurement. So it is not possible to simultaneously, simultaneously means at the same time, measure both the position and the momentum accurately. We know that momentum is the product of mass times velocity. So we can replace the momentum p as m times v. So delta p becomes m times delta v. The uncertainty in momentum is mass times the uncertainty in velocity. Now if you take the mass m of the electron to the right hand side, you're going to get delta x times delta v is greater than or equal to h divided by 4 pi m. So let's take an example to understand these formulas. Let's say a microscope is able to locate an electron within a distance of 0.1 angstrom. Now what is the uncertainty involved in the measurement of this electron's velocity? So here we can start with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle relation which is delta x times delta p equal to h by 4 pi. So I am taking an equal to not the greater than equal to because we are considering the minimum error here. So we have delta x times delta p equal to h by 4 pi or delta x times m times delta v equal to h by 4 pi. I have replaced the delta p with m times delta v. So delta v becomes equal to h divided by 4 pi delta x m. So now substitute the values that you have. Planck's constant h is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. Pi we can take as 3.14. Delta x, the uncertainty in position is 1 angstrom, which you have to convert into SI units, which is meters. So that is 0.1 times 10 to the power minus 10 meters. And the mass of the electron m is 9.1 times 10 to the power minus 31 kg. See, I've taken all the values in SI unit. And if you do the calculations after substituting these values, you will get delta V equal to 5.79 times 10 to the power 6 meter per second. So guys, as you can see, if we measure the position accurately, that is, there is low uncertainty in the position. When the uncertainty in position is very, very small, 
then the uncertainty in velocity, the delta V is a very large number as you can see here. We got 5.79 times 10 to the power 6 meter per second. So this example shows us that we cannot measure both the position and velocity accurately for microscopic particles such as electrons. Now let's take the example of a ball. Let's say the mass of this ball is 100 grams and it is moving at a speed of 20 meters per second. If the speed can be measured with an accuracy of 2%, you need to calculate the uncertainty in position of this ball. So once again, we can use the relation delta x times delta p equals h divided by 4 pi. We are going to replace the delta p, the change in momentum with m times delta v. So we are getting delta x m delta v equal to h by 4 pi. So if you rearrange it by taking delta x on the left hand side, you get delta x equal to h divided by 4 pi m delta v. Now the uncertainty in speed of this ball, delta v was 2% of 20 meters per second. So that's going to be 0.4 meters per second. The mass of this ball m is 100 grams. So let's convert it to SI units. That is 0.1 kg. And Planck's constant, you know, H is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. And pi you can substitute as 3.14. So putting all these values into the formula and calculating, you're going to get delta X as 1.32 times 10 to the power minus 33 meters. So is that a big value or a small value? It is a very, very small value because you have 10 to the power minus 33 meters. So this is even smaller than the nucleus of an atom. So here we can see that the error, the uncertainty in position delta x is very, very small. So when we measured the velocity with an accuracy of within 2%, we got a very small error in the position. So for this moving ball, both the velocity and position has been measured accurately. Why? Because it is a large object. It is a macroscopic object. It is not like a tiny microscopic electron. So for the moving ball, you can accurately measure the velocity and position of this ball. So as you can see, the effect of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is significant only for microscopic, the very tiny moving particles, and it is negligible for macroscopic objects. The significance of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is that for tiny moving particles, such as electrons, it is impossible to determine the paths or trajectory of these particles. Since it is impossible for us to accurately determine both the position and the velocity of the electron. This highlights a major drawback in Bohr's model of an atom. In Bohr's model, as we have discussed, an electron moves in well-defined circular orbits. And we had also looked at the formulas of the radius of these orbits and the velocity of the electrons in these orbits. That means, according to Bohr's model, we can determine the position of the electron based on the radius of the orbit and the velocity of the electron accurately because we have learned formulas for that. But Heisenberg's uncertainty principle clearly contradicts this model since it is impossible to simultaneously determine the exact position and exact momentum of the electron. We can only say that the electron is probably at this position or probably it's having a particular momentum. So this leads us to the quantum mechanical model of the atom, which describes the electrons in terms of probability waves. So the quantum mechanical model does not consider electrons simply as particles, but adopts this wave particle duality, which is very important for quantum mechanics. So as you saw, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle made a significant contribution to the quantum mechanical model of the atom. 
Now, do you know the name of the other famous scientist who also made a significant contribution to the quantum model of the atom? He derived the fundamental equation for quantum mechanics and he won the Nobel Prize for it. So, do you know the name of this famous scientist? Do let me know your answers by putting it in the comments below and I promise to reply to your answers. So, looking forward to your answers and do let me know the name of this scientist who made the equations for the quantum mechanical model of the atom and put your answers in the comments below. Just like trying to catch fireflies in the dark, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle reveals that there is an inherent fuzziness in our ability to know both the position and momentum of these tiny particles. It's not about limitations in our measurement tools. It's a fundamental feature of the quantum world. So, in a sense, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle tells us that there are limits to how precisely we can know certain properties of a particle simultaneously. It's a fundamental aspect of the quantum world that challenges our classical intuitions about precision and certainty. So I hope Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is crystal clear to you now and you will certainly hit the like button and share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, guys, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And do check out our website manochaacademy.com and our Android app Manocha Academy. To make it easy, I'll put the links below. We have full courses on physics, chemistry, biology, maths, coding and artificial intelligence. So guys, what are you waiting for? Do check out the links given below because in our courses, you're going to get live classes, interactive videos, quizzes, questions, mock tests and revision notes. So they'll really help you in clearing your concepts and preparing for your exams. So do check out the links given below and share it out with your friends. So stay connected with Manocha Academy and just keep learning.